My anxiety has anxiety now. I, I can't walk in if I don't have a mask, I have to run back to my car. Yeah. If somebody sneezes or coughs, yeah. you know, yeah. my senses are heightened. Brown. Some of you may know me as Dr. Nick. So today I just wanted to do a COVID talk, right? I have some of friends here. How has COVID affected you in your day-to-day -day life? For me, it has impacted my life financially drastically. Also, where family is concerned, it limits your interaction with people because people are standoff about the hugging and the whole, you know, personal up close interaction. And my family, I see where it also impact their going about their regular business. A lot of fear is in the here where that is concerned because persons are saying, especially when they go places and there's person out there not wearing their mask and they're in their space. And work wise I've learned to adapt, you know, with the protocols of the Ministry of Health, wearing a mask and sanitizing, which we have been doing for a long time, the whole hand washing thing, but the mask is the new thing, you know. Right. But sometimes it can be unbearable to wear it, right. you know, especially when you're in close spaces and you're in there for a long period of time. But based on what is happening, most people would say it is the new norm. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, you touched on some very important points a while ago, the financial aspect. A lot of persons actually were um, unemployed for a prolonged period, you know. And in Jamaica, a lot of us, um, probably not me and you, but a lot of our, our colleagues and our friends and persons in society, they have to work for their own, right? They have to go out. They have to be active, whether it's to sell, it is to do the hustle, the hard work, so forth. A lot of them don't have that luxury of being employed to a sector like, like both of us. And you, you touched on the interaction and I, I feel as if COVID definitely has dissolved how we interact and how we communicate overall. Because kids can't go to school anymore they don't know how to speak, interact, play. All those stuff are very fundamental in the development of a child. So, yeah. yeah. COVID, please go away, but. Well, for me, COVID has really, in some some areas of my life, it has really affected me. Mm -hmm. Even my kids at home, because even the online classes, sometimes they get frustrated because they can't do what they would normally do at school. Sometimes they cry. I didn't know that. I think if you don't have a, a strong family support system, we lose our children mm -hmm. in the sense that emotionally they will become weak, yeah. right? Financially, it has taken a toll on all of us. Health wise, I am very sorry for those persons who actually contract the virus because the fact that the stigma that is attached to it, right? The stigma and the health factors relate to other persons with the underlying ailments. Not everybody knows exactly how to deal with some stuff. Mm -hmm. So when they reach at that point in their life, I am really sorry for them. You understand? But it has taught us also how to take precautions and how to properly sanitize and to have proper hygiene. Because at some point in time, there were persons who did not do a lot of hand washing. They didn't do a lot of sanitizing. Right. You understand? So and social distance was Social like distance is not right. Yeah. <laughs> so no persons know exactly how to stay in their own, own space. space yeah. yeah. So that's my take on things. Hey, children, sometimes I say, Mommy, Mommy, I want to go back to school. 
cook. Yeah, of course, they, because they're, the they're, they're, not a, they're, no. they're not accustomed to not having their friends. They don't. They can't see another face. They can't run. The hugging, the interaction that they're accustomed to. I mean, I, when I was going to school, guys, I'm an introvert by nature, <laughs> but still, I, I had people around me. I have a big family, so I'm accustomed to that interaction. People speaking, running, talking, laughing. 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 Kill. I can't just imagine. Was even a little party at home. You know, all of that has to be taken into consideration. Right. Our children Birthday can't parties. do that yeah. anymore. You have your child, no, you have to just have a little cake and put a little candle in it and just let them blow it out. You know, the fun. COVID has robbed us of a lot of things. A lot of enjoyment. Yeah, a lot of things. A, a lot of my party fans can't go any more parties. I know that for a fact. Yeah. My friend behind the camera is saying, yes, guys. So definitely. <laughs> but COVID, we have had to make a lot of adjustments. And I, I am proud that the society has adapted so quickly. But I think a big thing we, we forgot to look at is that COVID-19 is depressing. It yeah. has, yeah, you know, it, it has really affected a lot of us with that aspect. Our depression and anxiety has kicked up, you know? My anxiety has anxiety, you know, I, I can't walk in. If I don't have a mask, I have to run back to my car. If somebody sneezes or coughs, yeah. you know, my yeah. senses are heightened. I know I came to, a little bit late to the party, but I don't know, you all want to give your three cents coming away? I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, 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 five. And, and how it has impacted me? Definitely. Alright, so, I don't think I go out as much as you do. <laughs> as I do. I go to church, sir. I go to church and work and push. Church, yeah, work yeah. and gym. We all go to church, work and gym. And home. And you, home. you go to gym? You go to gym? Look at me. I go to gym mentally. <laughs> Virtually. <laughs> uh, virtually. Alright. So I'm I'm like the type of person who go goes out once like when I feel like. Mm -hmm. So it kinda really uh, impacted me the, this mask thing having to enter a place with the mask. Mm -hmm. Knowing that especially when you're going in a place that is strictly water, mm -hmm. having to wear a mask to go in. To me it does not really make any sense. So I don't really go out like that mm -hmm. um but i've learned to, to adapt regularly i'm leaving my mask and i turn up for far feet <laughs> we kind of really tired of that yeah. <laughs> it's frustrating so as far as it is right now i'm at a point where i say that i can say that i am kind of comfortable but still want to go back to normalcy Definitely. I think I think a lot of us have been moving toward getting comfortable right now because I, I had a discussion with one of my friends and he said I think I probably have to strike this from the video. He said COVID has destroyed a lot of families because the the husband and wife never spent so much time together no. before. <laughs> you know? The the <laughs> wife never have so time. much never have so much interaction with the children before can they can't go to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now she doesn't know how to how to deal, how with, to deal with all of that. And a lot of persons, especially in the inner city com community, they don't have it, they're frustrated yeah. because it's so many of them in such a small yeah. space yeah. All, yeah. All, at once. all at the same time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then Normally they'll be able to go out, probably on the road, probably a dance, a party, none of that is happening again. So, social that events. Know, that we know. None of that is happening again. <laughs> yeah, and um, interaction is a big part of society. You know, yeah. It kind of help you unwind, release some of your stress levels. I can't take my daughter to get an ice cream, I have to do anything, I take it home. Oh, so she don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. So I'm wondering what this is going to do to her upbringing, her exposure. As I mean, you work nine to five job most time. Most of us work hours, super so hours, and you know when you get the little free time to spend with your kids, especially the minors, then mm -hmm. it's all about all they see is daycare and home, daycare and home, or 
online schooling and then it's just mommy daddy or mommy or just daddy you know so it limit their resources it limit their exposure and from time to time even my my dog she get you can see the frustration mommy i want to go to the supermarket mm -hmm. mommy when are we going to the supermarket because that is her little out there you understand most times you go out to work and you could just stop by there and just grab a few things and go home to the supermarket yes. you understand so it 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 it, it frustrating for them to you know, it is frustrating for them and they act up and then you know don't know how to deal with this with them. They're new. Right. I, how, how do you explain to a child you can't go out because of COVID nineteen? They don't understand. They don't understand. They won't understand. I mean I think <laughs> just like a couple of weeks ago, one of my niece came by and said, Auntie, Auntie I'm tired of this. Oh. I want to go to school. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, I, I'm not accustomed to kids saying they want to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> they always don't. Right. They to go to school today. Yeah. 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 So. yeah, so definitely. Um, COVID 19. What a wake up call it was, right? Yeah. It definitely is. But, you know, it, it is a good thing and it is also a bad thing in a way because for it is a good thing that some parents actually get the time to spend with their child some parents who are really concerned about the education of their children they spend time to to really sit with them and to, to look and see what they are what they are doing and actually actually learn from their children as well you understand but for those parents now who are not capable of doing all of that, uh, it is frustrating for them. Right, and, that's, that's, and that was a point I was just going to make. For a lot of the parents, yes, it is good because they get to interact with their children more. They can help them in school. They can check the homework. But people were going to be realistic. There are quite a number of parents that are not able to help their children with their homework. They're not able because they don't understand or because of limits with education which unfortunately they didn't have the chance so it does become a problem and a client of mine said one of the ways he was able to move forward and to do well in school was his mom and dad realized that they weren't able to really help him through high school and read the books and stuff like that and his dad lived in a different apartment where there was a university student there and it's the university student that was able to help and kind of go through the work with him mm -hmm. a lot of parents currently don't have that luxury yeah. you know and a lot of them because of pride and certain um, they're not going, issues, to, they're not going to ask and I, I really feel as if there should be some kind of mentoring program other than teaching the children so that our kids don't get left behind because I know a lot of children are struggling right now a lot of them are in school. Yeah. Um, online. And they don't have access to the online. Yeah. Right. So definitely um, something that I think we will want to address somewhere. Find some kind of way. Whether it's the churches or the organizations close by, I don't know. But that, that, that's something that I'd like them to look into and Ministry of Education to see if they can kind of adjust that and help a lot more children reach out to them, you know? Because I think, you know, you see, after COVID, mm -hmm. even though everybody in the world have a, have, um, a level of madness, you know, but we have a whole well, leap of yeah. mad people out there, you know, because too many persons are being restricted. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then socially, economically, emotionally, physically, all the alleys combined together. It's not everybody it's not everybody can actually deal with some stuff. Definitely. You understand? So when school get back, I hope that in the curriculum they put a section whereby they can do some mental health with the children. Yes. You know, I find out where they are at. You know, and even for the teachers, if it's even once per week, try to see if they can interact with the, the students online to find out how is it that they are coping and even the parents at home to try to find out for the kids how you're coping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mental wellness um, awareness is a, a big factor yeah. that needs to come into play. Sean, 
Give me your take on how you feel corona. The coronavirus is separate a lot of people. And that, that's kind of hard for Jamaicans altogether. Because we used to... Yeah, we, yeah, we don't more, use to that lifestyle. Yeah, we're we not accustomed to, to it, you know. Yeah. We used yeah. to can go to the family house and we can sit down and chill. Yeah. We can go to friend yeah. house and... True, you know, true. we can play yeah. Ludo, Domino, and we just chill a little bit. We can't do them things no more. Yeah, Christmas gone, it affects everybody. 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 everybody worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people never experience that Christmas like that. Yeah, this one. True, 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 yeah, true. that's true. Because yeah. personally, my family, we don't have like this big family dinner. We, we couldn't really do that because no, no, we don't want to expose my grandmother, you know? Because, yeah, just, just in case. Yeah. Last year was the first time in history I've stayed in my house so much. <laughs> <laughs> first time. You turn the gold. You know, you have to just adjust and adapt. You know, I feel like some people kind of depressed about the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. Yes. so yeah. as I said, depressed. Um, in my field, there has been an increase, significant increase in uh, suicide, mm. and depression, mm. mental illness, and all those things. Like, people just can't find ways and means how to deal with it. Right. Yeah. They're not coping. That yeah, way. not coping. Yeah, because it affects them livelihood and you know sometimes when they used to um a certain amount of money it now make that no more mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it affects a lot of people mm -hmm. the box world pop as when they say box world pop people food but okay. the most yeah. the persons you know lost their jobs and support you know what i mean yeah a lot so we have to just do what we have to do to protect our lives you know what i mean and spread the word you know what i mean so wear your mask and pepper hygiene and you know keep your social distance. Mm -hmm. Alright? Yeah. yeah and eat healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's true. <laughs> that is true. Please take your vitamin yeah. C, you know? Yeah, it's true. It's important. Mm -hmm. Your it's vitamins is very important. Yeah, man, you true. understand? Mm -hmm. very, 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 very a, lot, important. a lot of people get fat over this whole quarantine period, you know? Yeah, you know? I'm so <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dress up on yourself, make up on yourself. You see, we're gonna shape and do more now. Alright. That's the end of this segment. Yeah. 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 Any comments, drop it below. Tag me, um, repost, share. If there are any concerns that you want me to address, you can let me know. Thank you guys. COVID-19, an invented pandemic to cover up the effects of 5G radiation. It's Dr. Monique Brown. Some of you may know me as Dr. Neek. Today, I will be debunking some COVID-19 myths. Let's go. The first one is, can COVID-19 be transmitted through goods produced in other countries where there is an ongoing transmission? Okay, so let's talk about the facts first. COVID-19 can stay on surfaces for Hours. Normally, transportation of goods takes hours, days, sometimes even weeks. So the likelihood of really transmitting COVID-19 on parcels and goods is really, really, really low. Some ways that we can protect ourselves if we think that it's possible that COVID-19 is on the goods that we just purchased, we can simply clean and disinfect the goods. Our second question. Can COVID-19 be transmitted through mosquitoes? <laughs> so, no. COVID-19 is transmitted through coughing, sneezing, and even saliva. I think what we're mixing it up with is really like dengue. What about our clothes? How can we be sure that our, our clothes don't spread the virus? 
that's a that's an awesome question so when we go out whether it's to work the supermarket so forth we should really remove that clothing outside take a shower i want to say outside i don't mean outside like in the road or anything like that but before entering the bedroom can drinking alcohol and by alcohol i mean rum beer wine or any form of alcoholic beverage can drinking alcohol help prevent covid19 so that's a no so the consumption of alcohol cannot aid in prevention of covid19 some things that we can do to ensure that we don't get covid19 is to wear a mask wash our hands maintain the social distance and also remember alcohol in moderation would be advised because large consumption of alcohol can cause liver disease stomach related issues all right so it's a no to the alcohol consumption and covid19 protection thank you on to our next question we're living in jamaica is it true doc that COVID-19 is transmitted in colder climates and not in the hot and humid climate? So, that's definitely a no. We have seen COVID-19 cases pop up in cold climates and in hot climates. Even in Jamaica, we've had quite a number of COVID cases and we're pretty hot, right? Uh, so, no, the heat does not play any factor in the transmission of this virus okay can spraying alcohol or chlorine on our body kill the virus yeah, i believe when we ask if spraying alcohol and chlorine on on our bodies to kill the virus we're talking about the virus that we currently have meaning that we would have contracted covid19 and now we're using alcohol and chlorine to disinfect and if that's the case no guys definitely not and using raw alcohol and chlorine on our bodies especially in those sensitive areas such as our mouth face and eyes can cause burning and serious skin reactions so that's a no-go definitely if you have covid19 you need to one stay at home self-isolate inform the minister of health and wellness and you would get some supportive measures from your family physician. Can UV bulbs used for disinfecting an area be used to kill COVID-19 on our body? Wow, we are not going to use the UV bulbs on our skin. As harmful, it can cause serious burning to our skin and our hands. It's a no, 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 no. What we're going to do is try to protect ourselves from contracting COVID-19. Wear your mask, maintain the social distance, and please wash your hands. Thank you. What about eating garlic? Can it prevent COVID-19? Really? <laughs> it's a no. Garlic does has a lot of antimicrobial properties. Yes, a lot of health benefits, but currently no proof has been brought forward that garlic can help to treat or prevent COVID-19. All right, so it's a no, no guys. No to the garlic, no to the ginger tea, no. Can rinsing your nose regularly with saline, for example, prevent COVID-19? Okay, so I guess that is stemming from us having flu, different flu viruses and flu-like illnesses and being prescribed the normal saline nose drops to, yes, rinse the nostrils and so forth. So for normal flu or the common cold, I should say, the normal saline nose drops, yes, those are very good. But for COVID-19, there has been no proof or research to say that it can actually prevent you contracting COVID-19. Okay, so on that note, Doc, can the pneumonia vaccine prevent COVID-19? So currently, there's still a lot of research being done. A lot is not known about COVID-19, but there has been no information brought forward to say that receiving vaccines or other flu vaccines actually provide any immunity for 
COVID-19. Okay, Doc, our next question. Is it true that only the elderly or those with underlying health conditions will get seriously ill and even require hospitalization for COVID-19? Okay, guys, so I do not know what would happen, how my body would respond if I contract COVID-19. You do not know how your body will respond if you contract COVID-19. God forbid my grandma does not know how her body would respond if she contracts COVID-19. It's still very new. Yes, we do know that there are persons in society that are placed at high risk. The elderly, of course, those with comorbid conditions, those with immunosuppressive conditions, but overall, it's the risk versus the benefits, right? We need to ensure that we limit how many persons do contract the virus. Regardless, even if it's 1% of the population that gets really, really ill and dies, God forbid we would ever have to experience that because that's quite a number of deaths. Thank you, Doc. For those persons who are currently on antibiotics, is it true that them being on antibiotic may help in preventing or even treating COVID-19? So, COVID-19 is a virus. Virus do not respond to antibiotics. Antibiotics are for bacterial infections. So, there might be cases where persons with COVID-19 might be treated with antibiotics because they have a superimposed bacterial infection, maybe a pneumonia, which the doctor or the managing physician thinks it's related to a bacteria. But for the treatment of COVID-19, which is a virus, antibiotics is not indicated and definitely would not offer any type of immunity. Thank you, Doc. If I take my, my vitamin supplements, can those prevent or even treat COVID-19? That's a really good question. So there have been a lot of claims that there are different medications there to treat COVID-19 and certain vitamins, zinc, magnesium, I think vitamin C, that could prevent you from contracting COVID-19. So vitamins and supplements are there to aid in our strengthening our immune system. Yes, we agree. It aids to help us feel stronger, feel better. I agree completely. Unfortunately for the COVID-19 virus, the best immunity would be the antibodies to that antigen. And unfortunately, none of these drugs, medication or supplements offer that. So it is a no currently but there's still a lot of research being done and as soon as we get any more information i'll be definitely updating you guys on that okay if i drink lots of water will it flush out the covid19 no drinking a lot of water cannot flush out covid19 but i love the initiative drinking a lot of water hydrating your body substituting water for all of our drinks sugary products so forth is a good initiative i applaud you come continue to do so will it flush out covid no it will not the virus typically lasts anywhere from 10 to 14 days so we do expect that within 14 days you should have recovered from the covid 19 disease okay, Doc, we are down to our last myth is covid 19 an invented pandemic to cover up the effects of 5g radiation Wow, <laughs> I've heard a lot of myths. I've heard that the COVID-19 vaccine has a chip in it. Uh, I don't know how a chip would be in, implanted in a vaccine, but I'm always looking forward to new information and knowledge. Currently, there is no data or research to say that the COVID-19 pandemic is related to 5G network at all nor are there any symptoms related to COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic is a very serious thing to take into consideration. We need to ensure that our population is adequately informed and protects themselves and inadvertently protects everyone else. All right, we need to stop the spread of COVID-19 and also guys 
I, I can't say this enough. Please educate yourself as best as possible. Go out there, look at reputable sources, WHO, CDC. There's a lot of information circulating on the media. It's easy to share, like, and make these comments that we're not entirely sure what we're talking about. But we need to stop the spread of misinformation. All right, guys? Again, follow the protocols, wear your mask, maintain the social distance, and please wash your hands. This is Dr. Monique Brown. You know me as Dr. Neek. Do you have a question that you'd like me to answer? Is there anything that I said that you don't agree with? Comment below. Use my hashtag, ask Dr. Neek. As always, uno, like, subscribe, share. Make a friend them know where I go on in other place. On Afi, 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 stay in farm. Oh, big up on the side. It's Dr. Neek and today I'm playing a game of Never Have I Ever and one of the guests, the special guest, you guys know him as Dr. Dial. Please do not like him more than you like me. Alright, let's go. Okay, so I will be asking you a series of questions mm -hmm. and you will hold up your paper um, showing I have or I have not. There you go. Okay. So the first, <laughs> the first one is, never have I ever diagnosed myself with a rare disease. <laughs> <laughs> you never diagnosed yourself with a rare disease. Well, never. The rare disease. Thank God, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately. I have self-diagnosed on a number of occasions. I'm not going to disclose the diagnosis, guys, but for the upcoming medical students, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Next one, never have I ever argued with a patient. <laughs> uh, I have. Sadly, I have. You know, sometimes you have very obnoxious patients that you kind of have to be on their level sometimes to get them to understand what you're trying to say. So, sadly I have, but I managed to bring them down to my level. Okay. Never have I ever recruited a family member or a close friend to practice a physical exam <laughs> I think it is all med student. Definitely. Throughout medical school, my sisters were my main patients. Definitely. Every day, I had to use them to practice. Whether it's a respiratory exam, cardiovascular, abdominal, CNS. <laughs> my pillow, my pillow, my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teddy bear. <laughs> Never have I ever been in a fight at work. Definitely not. No, I'm not going to keep it off the question at all. Okay, no, good doctors. Never have I ever worn no underwear to work. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Can't be hanging loose. <laughs> Never have I ever dated a colleague. Okay, never have I ever called in sick to attend a party. No, definitely not. Who would do such a thing? <laughs> never have I ever been attracted to a patient. Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. There's certain... Yeah, yeah, there's certain boundaries we, we definitely won't cross. 
I'm sorry, if, I, if you're my patient, that's definitely where it stops. I see you as a patient, nothing else. Hmm. Alright. Never have I ever drank alcohol on the job or mm -hmm. hidden alcohol in a coffee cup. Definitely not. I can't even handle one drink when I'm at a party, much less though. <laughs> The only thing that's ever in my cup is water. Stay hydrated, guys. Mind your business. Never have I ever cheated on a medical exam. Bright sparks. <laughs> Never have I ever used my title on a police officer to get away from a ticket. <laughs> I mean, tickets are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get to the beach for that time. <laughs> Never have I ever assisted an ill person on, or on a plane or in public. Hmm. I actually have not had the luxury of doing so. You have? Yeah, I have actually. I think I was on my way to New York and some patient i think it was their first time flying mm -hmm. and i think they're just company that they're very nauseous want to vomit they're just screaming going ballistic and everybody's looking at the patient and i'm like oh lord god no is, is there a doctor in the house the doctor in the house somebody look at me my friend was with me like i'm, like, you? <laughs> I'm flying but yeah i managed to calm down tell them some stretches to use to Calm, calm down. It works. He eventually came back to himself. Okay. 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 Alright. So it was just mostly anxiety. Anything okay. else? Was well, his first time flying? Wasn't used to the, the the pressure change as you have. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Understand completely. Alright. Final one. Never have I ever had sex on the job. <laughs> of the segment of Never Have I Ever with Dr. Dial. Please remember to comment below, share, like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. And this is Dr. Dial and Dr. Nick signing out. And as always, big up on yourself. what the requirements are to get into medical school it's dr neek if you're new to my channel please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos i will be uploading new videos every tuesday and friday at 7 pm in today's video i have a special guest it is mr damar guys today we're going to talk about what the requirements are to get into medical school what medical school is like and what it's like becoming a doctor okay damar tell us a little about yourself so hello guys i'm damar najir i'm a third year medical student and i also have a youtube channel so i would like you guys to check out that channel it's called the dnn medical series so i've been getting a lot of questions about what is required to become um a medical student how to get into medicine as you guys know i completed medicine <laughs> Decades ago, you know, I'm not as young as I look. <laughs> but, 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 so a little about um, my experience getting into medical school. I went to Wilma's Trust High School for Girls. <laughs> I completed fifth form, then I did two years of um, upper six, right? Mm -hmm. I would have done biochem, physics, math, communication studies that's yeah, it yeah. yeah right then i did one year of applied sciences or pre applied science at ue where again i did biochem and math and something else i can't recall at this current time and then i applied to medical school you know this was over a decade plus so <laughs> <laughs> has it changed has it changed much um not much um i think it's the same sexy first so five six is biochemistry and physics in only three science subjects mm -hmm. maths and english right and then when you do k it's bio and chemistry mm -hmm. 
plus any other unit. So no, it's not physics or math, but you can do Spanish, you can do MOB. If there is a six form course that you're more comfortable with and know that you can get a better grade in, you can do that because they will accept it along with the communication study. Okay. Um, as Monique said, there is also the route for pure and applied sciences. So if you try in Cape and you don't get through, mm -hmm. no worries. You can go to pure and apply for one year and then you transfer to the medical science faculty the next year. Oh. If not, you can also finish degree and then you go to um, medical, medical school. school because that's how I did it. Mm -hmm. I did my degree in biochemistry and then I went over um, to, to medical school. Mm -hmm. There's also the option for you to get a master's or a PhD. On the current U system, um, master's is valid four extra points and PhD is valid six extra points. Mm -hmm. So if you want those extra points to get you through the program, then that's also an option. Okay, awesome. So, I guess there's not really much of an age restriction on that aspect. No, 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 no. Right. Trust me, there's no age restriction. There are persons in my class who are in their 30s, 40s, right. and stuff, and they still come into medical school. There shouldn't be an age limit on when you should achieve their goal. Everybody's different. I agree completely. And, you know, a point to take away, when I was um, applying for medical school, you know, the decade and so ago. <laughs> <laughs> what um what really happened, it was like taboo for anyone to leave high school and then go directly into medical school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So almost everyone had like an undergrad degree or they would have finished sixth form, applied for medical school and then they had to go like on a waiting list. Yeah, deferral. Yeah. Right. So they got deferred. Um so when I applied for medical school after one year of pure and applied sciences, you know, those persons who would have applied straight on the bat were just coming, coming out from off. the deferral. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it works. It works. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So we know about the subjects. Tell me about what medical school is like now. Again, you know, a decade plus, I'm... Um, the brain is, <laughs> you know, the brain is kind of getting a tad bit old. Well, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Mine too. Um, <laughs> but I think now we're in a pandemic, so it's kind of different. But mm -hmm. pre-pandemic, pre we'd have been in pre-clinicals. So you have lectures and tutorials and your anatomy lab, right? Anatomy lab mm -hmm. is the physical part of the preclinical. So you go to the labs, you work on the cadavers, try to identify like the blood vessels, the nerve and things like that. So before that, it was just a lot of classes, mm -hmm. lots of studying, as you would imagine. And yeah, a lot of time spent in the anatomy lab and getting used to that smell. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So for the first two years of medical school, it's the preclinical where you're mostly just doing lecture lectures, the, mm -hmm. the core study course. study yeah. core values and stuff like that. And then, as you said, you know the clinical aspect where you're actually um, on the wards in the hospital, interacting you're there with interacting patients. with patients, learning and so forth. For me, you know, throughout medical school. It was always study, 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 library, library, library. I'm tired, I'm fatigued. <laughs> and I recall that I'm somewhere between the gym and the University of the West Indies Student Union. That's where I, I tend to be. So okay. she's always been in the gym, guys. As you guys okay. see, up to this point, she's right? still going to the gym. It helps me Who to be stressed. Right? It helps me to be stressed. Right. I'm on other things. I'm on other things. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so for you, what what is your typical experience like? What has it been like? Um, right. So as again, I I was saying it's a lot of studying. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to eat the, the 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 ball and start just studying, practicing from mm -hmm. the get go. I know you're used to Cape, and a lot of people come into Cape, into medical school with the same Cape mentality. Where they're like, okay, I can just use three days to study mm -hmm. and then I'll be fine. Like that cannot work. That cannot work. Understand? Mm -hmm. You have to keep up to pace because you're getting at least eight lectures a day, right. right? Five times a week, so that's like forty lectures a week. So if you leave forty lectures a week until the week of the exam, <laughs> then that's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And 
So you have to eat the groundwork from early. You need to find a group of students. Med school, that's one thing everybody will say. And then you will learn that it actually makes sense. You need a group of people because we're not strong in one year. For example, I wasn't strong in anatomy, but I had friends. So we go to the lab in the evening. They will show me stuff so that I could prepare for my anatomy exam. So you need a group of friends, good friends, dedicated friends, who will push you along and just help you um, to go get through med school. Yeah, and that's a good point because um, with regards to medical school, I think I had like probably four or five study groups. Four or five? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I study a lot. Um, because, you know, I'm always like intrigued to learn more and yeah. so forth. And a big part of medicine is so much information, so much knowledge. And five years really isn't that long, you know. Yeah, yeah. It really seems as if, oh, five years is so long. But when you have the entire human body that you need to learn about, mm -hmm. plus the diseases, the pathophysiology, the drugs, of always, the, drugs the treatment, I mean, that is a lot. Mm -hmm. And as Damar rightly said, you know, you need to get it going like you, you cannot lapse there is no oh i'm gonna study the night before that does not work for medicine yeah yeah, yeah. all right awesome cool so we talked about what it is like being a medical student you know you're always studying you're always in the books mm -hmm. but what's the tuition like like Again, Damar, I'm gonna <laughs> guys decade. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the prices have changed. Mm -hmm. I know the University of the West Indies quotes in US dollars, the mm -hmm. dollar fluctuates. Right, right. I know it's at what one fifty? Somewhere, Somewhere along that line. Yes. So the school fee keeps increasing. Right. <laughs> when I um entered medical school in two thousand and ten mm -hmm. I had the government um, sponsorship, right? And it was somewhere around 500 and something thousand that I would have paid per year, mm -hmm. and that is times five years. But I believe the tuition was 2.2 million per year. Like that was a full time. tuition at that point, times five years, guys. So. It's like 11 million. 11, and I would have paid somewhere between 2.2 five to three million for my tuition um okay. you know mm -hmm. along with some purchases so, and stuff mm -hmm. like that but what is the current tuition like give me a breakdown do they still have these government sponsorship do they have the euro bursary what mm -hmm. what is it like all right so let's start um from the smallest amount you can pay up to the largest amount sure so as money rightfully said there's a government sponsorship However, in recent time, there has been a lot of problems with the government sponsorship because a lot of people, they research how to get you from a school. Mm -hmm. They're hitting all the ones in Cape. And mm -hmm. if everybody has, if a hundred people has all ones in Cape, then who gets the government sponsorship? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like very difficult at this point. So there's challenge with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think last year there, there were basically no government sponsorship because it was already filled from the year before oh. so they're having problems with that and so oh so those persons had to be deferred deferred and, oh. and things like that so the only option at that point was to pay the, the full, full tuition. tuition right but there's also the bursary if you qualify for the full tuition fee so the full tuition is 28,000 US dollars yes 28,000 US dollars that's about like four mil per year. Per year, right? Per year. So you're okay. looking at a twenty mil um, to to cover your med school if you're a full fee pay, mm -hmm. right? But the university offers what we call a bursary, and that pays fifty percent. So you basically pay about one point eight million per year, right? With the bursary. So the bursary, before they usually give most persons on the full tuition tuition once you show that you can pay. The 1.8, mm -hmm. they will give you the other 1.8, right? Because they don't want to like pay the 1.8 and then, and then you, you can't, can't find. So you need to submit information to show that you're capable of paying the 1.8. And these days, even the bursary, only a small amount of persons are getting it mm -hmm. at this point, right? So it's very competitive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow. Okay. So. 
28,000. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I just had to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty penny or two. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what it is currently. So we learned about the finances, and that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. What are the scholarship options? Like, mm -hmm. can you get any um, subsidies with regards to these tuition? I did mm -hmm. back in a decade ago. A decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and what, what what is available now? Right. Let let them know what's available now. All right. So as I said before, the first scholarship opportunity would be the bursary because the former scholarship you still need to maintain a GPA you still need to qualify for it mm -hmm. okay and the bursary I must say you have to be a citizen of one of the is it CARICOM? CARICOM countries oh, CARICOM. right okay. so if you're from India or you're from the US you won't get the bursary it's mm -hmm. for only the CARICOM countries right mm -hmm. so if you do qualify for that that counts as a scholarship however what I find odd is that if you're a full fee paid student, you cannot get a scholarship from the university itself, mm. right? But if you're on the government sponsored, paid 700,000, then you can get scholarship, which seems weird, right? Because you think that you are paying 28,000 in Jamaica, majority of person cannot afford that. So you would need like scholarship mm. and stuff to cover it. But no, it's not like that. But the government does help and that's an avenue for scholarship you can explore. The Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Education, they have scholarship, they have grants as well. There is the Jamvat program, I would encourage everybody to do the Jamvat program. I did it for two years and basically just do 200 hours of community service mm -hmm. and I choose the hospital because I'm always there and it's closer and convenient and it works for me and they'll pay I think $350,000 from your school fee if you're a full fee paying student. There's also things like Chase Fund, um, NCB Foundation gives scholarship, and there are loans, right? I know a lot of people get scared when you hear loans because then you have to pay back, it's not a scholarship, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll encourage you to explore all the options you can if you find that you're having challenges just the same, even with the scholarship, then if it's a loan standing between you and being a doctor, then I personally will we'll choose um, getting the loan, right? There's also loans from other institutions. Mm -hmm. I know the credit union, a lot of people have been talking about credit union, that their interest rates are lower. Maybe you can explore credit union or bank loan to see if it's better than student loan, but I wouldn't write off loans overall. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. all right, good point. And also, um, back in mm -hmm. my decade, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I you know, I got I got sponsorships from other entities. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not just the the scholarships that are listed and the ones for Ministry of Finance. There are other avenues. You know, there are persons that your family might know. There are other companies that might be willing to invest in you and your education. Mm -hmm. And also, the university actually has a bursary with like a ton of other small um, contributions. contributions. Yeah, yeah. It, it might be small, but it actually does make a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I got um, versus some books, persons groceries. got for groceries, groceries. some got for, um, I think, hall, they hall, got a the hall, hall. Mm -hmm. and for the persons who play sports, they actually do get bursaries also, also and they, yeah, yeah, they get different type of scholarships. So, you could always try and... Um, Mm -hmm. Checking different avenues. I, I'm from the inner city. You know, my parents definitely could not have afford to send me to medical and school. And I'm from the poor parish of St. Mary, so my parents yeah. definitely couldn't have afford that. Mm -hmm. So I think a point that you have to take note of is that you have to see these opportunities. You cannot sit down and say, oh my God, I hope I'm going to get a scholarship, but you don't apply. Right? It's just like lotto. If you if don't have a ticket, you don't have a chance. So if you don't send out your resumes, um, for the opportunities, you're not going to get the opportunities, and it's funny. But I can remember when I was in first year and I didn't have the tuition money, and like I had some problems with my application, so I ended up going in like October, saying no, December coming up, tuition needs to be paid. I can remember just walking with letters mm -hmm. telling my story and the need for sponsorship, etc. And I dropped them at different location, 
and yeah, people did call, so you cannot just sit down, you just have to see these opportunities right. and make use of them at the same time. Yeah. Right, and I think there's also, um, I think Scotia, Scotia. NCB, and yeah, yeah. Chase Fund yeah, yeah. that you can always look down that avenue yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of information out there, mm -hmm. and you can like Google, Google. Google. Yeah, you Google, Google should be your best friend. At this time, type in Jamaican scholarship, scholarship for this, mm -hmm. scholarship for medical science, you know, get specific at times, right? But yes. just see those opportunities, definitely. Right. So, finances should not be a, a deterrent. Factor, yeah. yeah, should not be a deterrent at the end of the day, and it should not um, stop you from achieving your dreams. And I think a lot of people, too, I was like that first where you said you want to see the entire tuition before you start mm. and a lot of people don't know that you're not going to see 20 million sitting in front of you nobody has that money but if you start we don't have that money. we don't have that money <laughs> yeah some people do but for majority of us we don't have that money so just make a start sometimes just push yourself and say okay then i'm going by faith and get the first tuition and apply for second tuition get it if you need to sit out a year or so just ensure that you're on the path to getting where you want to be right because at the end of the day if you sit at home you're still going to sit and do nothing yeah, yeah. and again if it's your dream um i'm a dream chaser you know yeah. at the end of the day uh when, when it comes to medicine you're investing in yourself and your mm -hmm. future so if, if you take that leap of faith and you invest in yourself, I'm pretty sure once you are determined mm -hmm. and you know your focus, you will complete successfully, mm -hmm. right? Yes. All right, awesome. So we, we talked about just you know what you need to get into medical school, what medical school looks like, the finances. That you gave us a little bit about fine, um, the scholarship. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give someone that is trying to get into medical school or is possibly in medical school now, mm -hmm. uh, as currently experiencing it? I'll tell you what my advice is. What, what is your advice for someone right. like that? So as Monique said before, you need to be determined. Mm -hmm. You want to know that this is what you want because if you're doing it for any other reason, then it's going to be extremely difficult for you it's possible just the same enough but it's going to take more effort and more work from you so you need to have determination and know there are things that are going to, that are going to throw you off like finance and things you have to deal with but you have to remember your goal what you need to achieve and do what it takes to get there um, there are friends in medical school who will help you along the way there are other persons there struggling just like you right and you just have to do what it takes and yeah just do it just do it like nike like nike <laughs> just do it just do right. it right all right well my my takeaway points would be um or encouragement i should say would be one ensure that this is something that you love this is something that you really want to do Passion. right you have to be passionate about mm -hmm. it you, you don't come into medicine to be a doctor to be rich it's right. not for being a glorified professional it's not for the aesthetics of mm -hmm. what the medical profession is and you have to be determined you know you have to decide that this is what I want to do I am going to persevere even when you know the work gets hard you get tired you're not understanding a subject failures failures are possible mm -hmm. and at the end of the day you just have to love what you do if and this is not just medicine this is any profession any job profession that you want you can achieve it i believe that once you can think it you can achieve it you just have to ensure that you persevere but you must love what you do at the end of the day right. you must be in it for the long haul because you're not going to do it for five years and then Oh, I don't want to be a doctor Not anymore. Too. You must be passionate about it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not about the money. So 
it if it's if it's, if you think it's for the money, I don't believe it is the right. right now that you've raised that point about the money, mm-hmm. see that the tuition is so expensive. I think a lot of my classmates and myself mm-hmm. begs the question that are we going to make back the money that we spend in medical school? Well, Damar, this was not a part of the discussion. <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, so guys, if you would like to know how much a Jamaican doctor makes, type it in the comments below. If I get a hundred comments saying that you want to know how much you make, I'll, I'll drop that video. That video will be linked in the description if you guys really want to know. Alright guys, so please get this video a hundred comments even more even a thousand to show her that you really want to see this video because I want to. Alright? I'm really looking forward to that video so much. Definitely. And just to briefly say that not all doctors are paid on the same pay same scale person. because there are different um, types of doctors, different levels. And I'll definitely break it down so you can see what the average doctor makes. Average doctor. The average doctor. <laughs> and I'll even tell you how much I make. Right. Yeah. I should pay my pace. Right. I, it's fine. I'm good. I, I have no problem showing you guys. Right. So, if you are interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. Mm-hmm. Share the video with some of your friends. Mm-hmm. All right. Are you aspiring to be a doctor? For all my aspiring medical students, what is your favorite subject? My favorite subject was bio. And I love math, of course. Damar, what was your favorite? Well, I think a lot of people would disagree with the math, especially in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't like mathematics, but mine was actually chemistry. Right. Right. I loved chemistry up until <laughs> <laughs> because the transition from pure applied chemistry to yeah. cave chemistry was a bit much. Yeah. But I loved chemistry, and I also loved math. And you also did a degree in biochem, yeah, right? Yeah, I did a degree in biochem. Right, yeah. So, um, hence, I would like chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> Super smart, guys. Super smart. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a smart one. <laughs> You're the doctor, doctor after, after all. I am the doctor after all. Right. Hmm. <laughs> Can I get a halo there? Alright, <laughs> all right, guys. This has been fun. If you really enjoyed the content, smash the like button. Come on. Give that big thumbs up, guys. Yeah, definitely. It's Dr. Nick. I would just love to thank soon to be Dr. Najir. Right? 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 right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, definitely, guys. It's been real. We, we definitely enjoy this one. If you did enjoy it, share with some of your friends. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, what are you what doing? You? Subscribe. Come on. Right. Stop playing with me. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. And if you want to see that next video, drop it in the comments below. A Dr. Nick and soon to be Dr. Najir on a big up on the cell. Big up on the cell. Not really. You saw the last video by the pool where I cost my bottle. You see the video. Whenever I cost my bottle, it was stage. It was stage, guys. It really was. Then you like one swimsuit, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I did not say. It. <laughs> it was staged. <laughs> I'm sticking by it. Staged. I did it. It's a clickbait. You have a click. Baited. Good. What's free about the camera? They say you should show yourself when you're talking. What was it, your... gives, it gives you more energy. It looks even more energetic. Okay. Watch my TikTok videos. Most of the times I'm screaming at the camera. <laughs> Let's get into it. Alright, so guys, I'm Damar Najir. I am a third year medical student and I also have a YouTube channel. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chopped up. <laughs> oh, we're going to do my part or you're doing everything? Yeah. No, we're going to do my part. You're very tea. We're going to do over everything. <laughs> you're currently at. Can we put my phone silent? <laughs>